Hi everyone, I'm Li Jiechen from UC Berkeley. Today I'm going to present my work on new lower bound and randomization for ACA0 and a randomization centric view on the algorithmic method. Here's the plan for today's talk. First, I'm going to review the background on circuit lower bounds and the algorithmic method. Then, I'll talk about our result on a generalization centric perspective on the algorithmic method. Finally, I will briefly talk about the technical ingredient and a proof overview. So let's start with the background. So here's an oversimplified history and motivation for proving the scalar bounds. So since the 1980s, people wanted to prove NP is not equal to as not equal to P, we are proving lower bounds for stronger and stronger circuit classes. And the ultimate goal is to prove NP is not in P slash poly, where P slash poly denotes our polynomial size circuit. So first, people look at a much weaker version of circuit class called AC0, which is the constant depth and or not circuit, where the and or not have unbounded finite. So a seminal line of work proved that the parity function is hard for AC0 circuit. So the next goal is to consider stronger circuit class. So people just add parity, parity into AC0 and consider parity 2, which is AC0 extended with parity gate. And then using the polynomial method, when Borough and Smolensky proved that mod 3 is hard for H02. So here, mod p is the function which outputs 1 if and only if p does not divide the number of 1s in the input. So naturally, the next goal is to add mod 3 into the circuit class and consider a slightly larger circuit class. And that's H06, which is H0 extended with mod Six gate. I mean, mod 6 is equivalent to have both mod 2 and mod 3. So, AC06 is AC0 expanded with mod 6 gates and it's obtained by adding parity and mod 3 into AC0. It seems it shouldn't be much stronger than AC0 parity and the people believe it might be possible to prove lower bounds against A06. But unfortunately, it has been open for, 10, for two decades, whether even an X, the non-deterministic exponential time contains function that, that cannot be computed by polynomial size A06 circuit of step three. And the progress basically stopped here until in 2011, Ann Williams proved that NX does not have polynomial size ACC0 circuit. And uh, similar to AC06, we use AC0M to denote constant depth polynomial size N or not mod M gate circuits. And the ACC0 is simply the union of AC0M for all constants M. So after Williams' work, Murray and R. Williams proved that NQ, NQP, non-deterministic quasi-polynomial time, does not have polynomial size A0 circuit, which greatly improved the, the complexity class NX to NQP. And later, Chen and Ren, following some previous work, proved that NQP cannot be strong, cannot be half plus one over polynomial approximated by polynomial size H0 circuit, thereby improving the worst case lower bound to a strongly average case lower bound. And later, Chen, Lu, and Williams proved that E to the NP cannot be half plus two to the minus n to the little o1 approximated by two to the n to the little o1 size h0 circuit, 
for us sufficiently large impedances that by proving the first almost everywhere lower bound against H0 circuit. So in this talk, in, in, in this work, we'll give alternative proofs for the first two results and some new results. So Williams original proof is kind of indirect in the sense that it's essentially at its heart a proof by contradiction. And a, a very, very rough summary is that you assume the desired lower bound is false. For example, you assume that Nx is contained in H0, and then you, sh you contradict the n time, the non-deministic time hierarchy theorem meaning that the lower bound must be true. And see the full version of this paper for a detailed presentation of Williams' original proof. And our motivation is that, can we have a more direct proof? Of course, this question is kind of vague. So intuitively, we want to avoid any proof by contradiction. That's our motivation. And such a proof might be easier to, to, to understand. So next, let's move to our result. Here is the roadmap for showing NQP not in H0 following our derandomization-centric perspective. So first, I'm going to prove a lower bound for a certain subclass of MA. Here, MA denotes many other protocols which I'm going to define in a moment, against ACC0. And next, we're going to de-randomize this subclass of MA into NQP. Then, then we'll have a hard language in NQP against ACC0, which is exactly what, what we want. So we begin by the first step a lower bound for a subclass of MA against ACT0. We first recall the definition of MA, which is a randomized version of NP. So we say a language L is in MA if there is a polynomial time uniform algorithm V such that given an input X, it guesses some witness Y and tosses some coins R. And we require that if X is in L, then there exists a witness Y such that V accepts with probability at least two thirds. And if X is, X is not in L, then for every Y, the probability of, of V accepts a random R is at the most one third. And uh, we use MA sub C to denote the subclass of MA such that V admits polynomial size non-uniform C circuit. So we think about MA sub C as a subclass of MA where the verifier V is, is efficient in the sense that it admits uh, C implementation. And uh, our first result says that for every constant K, MA sub HCC0 has no n to the k size h0 circuit. And for the second step, we want a randomization of ma sub h0 into nqp. We'll just use a recent result by Chen, Liu, and Williams. So a theorem from Chen, Liu, and Williams says that ma sub h0 is contained in infinitely often NQP. In other words, it says that for every language L in MA sub ACC0, there is a language L prime in NQP such that for infinitely many input lenses N, L and L prime agrees on N bit inputs. So for our first result, we know that MA sub HZ0 is hard for HZ0. And uh, from the previous work by Chen Liu and William, we can de-randomize MA sub HZ0 
into NQP. So intuitively combining them together, we should have NQP not in S0. However, that's an issue we call it infinity often issue. So, and the, the, the caveat here is that if you look at the statement precisely, the first result says that that the language L in MA sub H0 such that for infinitely many impedances N, L is hard on N bit input for H0. And uh, the theorem one says that for every language L in MA H0, that's an L prime such that for infinitely many N, L and L prime equals on N bit inputs. The problem, so our plan is to take a hard language from result one in MA sub H0 and de-randomize into another language L prime Hope and hope that L prime is still hard against H0. But this does not work as we expected because, because what if L and L prime only agrees on inputs that L is not hard? So because we only know L and L prime agrees on an infinite set of, of input lenses and L is hard on another infinite set of input lenses. So it's very possible that these two sets are actually disjoint and L prime do not inherit in, and do not retain the hardness of L. And that's a big problem. So how do we resolve this issue? We'll use ideas from Murray and Williams. So what, what we'll do is that we'll strengthen both result one and theorem one so that the two relevant sets. So the first set is that all, all the input lenses such that L is hard for H0 from result one. And uh, the second set is all the input lenses such that L and L prime agree on. We'll strengthen both results so that these two sets have an infinite size intersection. And if, and if we can guarantee that, then L prime is going to agree with L infinitely many input lenses where L is actually hard against H0. So L prime is going to be hard against H0 as well. And let's see the full version of this paper for more details. So following this new perspective, we not only obtain some alternative proofs for old results, we also obtain some new results. So first, we have an improved lower bounds for Nx against H0. So Williams proved that Nx has no sub third exponential size H0 circuit. And we improved the lower bound to be Nx has no sub half exponential size H0 circuit. So here, we say a function, we say a size function S of N to be sub half exponential if S of S of N is sub, -ex sub exponential. And we say it is sub third exponential if S of S of S of N is sub half sub exponential. And see the full version for a, for a precise definition. And we also obtain new derandomization for H to zero. So the previous work by Chen Lu and Williams derandomized MA A to zero into non-deterministic proof systems with quasi-polynomial time and quasi-polynomial proof length. Because the only show MA sub A to zero is contained in infinity often NQP. And we improve the proof length to be polynomial, but the running time is still quasi-polynomial. So that is we show every MA sub S0 proof system can be de-randomized into a non-deterministic proof system with quasi-polynomial running time and uh, polynomial non-determinism bits. And making use of this new randomization, we also prove that NQP 
with super polynomial non-determinism bits is strongly average k part against h0. This improves previous work by Vyas and Chen and Ren. Again, see the full version of the paper for more detail. And then finally, I'm going to briefly talk about the technical ingredient and give a proof overview. So recall that we want to prove a result when that MA sub H0 has no n to the k size H0 circuit. In fact, we are going to prove a more general result, not a more formal, that for most circuit class C, we have for every constant k, MA sub AC0 parity of C has no n to the k size C circuit. So note that AC0 is closed under taking up AC0 parity at the top. So this implies what we want. And, uh, and what is AC0 parity of C? So, so figuratively speaking, you have a top AC0 parity circuit whose input are the output of a layer of C sub-circuit. So, so, so you have a layer of C sub-circuit at the bottom, and each of, each of them output one bit. And you have a top H0 parity circuit, which is going to take all the outputs of those C circuits as input, and then output another bit. And the previous work shows that shows a very similar result, but, uh, but uh, for MA sub TC0 of C has no n to the k size C circuit. So here, TC0 is constant depth polynomial size circuits consisting entirely of majority gates. The so goal here is, sim is simply to improve the T0 above to A0 parity to prove result 1. And, uh, and why the previous work has to use T0 in the MA verifier? So roughly speaking, the previous work uses a P-space complete language with a T0 instance checker. So what is an instance checker? So we say a language L is same length instance checkable. It resides that polynomial time oracle machine M such that first on an input X, all query made by M to its oracle has the same length as X. Second, if M is given the correct oracle, meaning that if M is given access to L on n bit, on n -bit inputs, then M outputs L of X with probability 1. And uh, for every possible X and all possible oracle, M outputs the, so M either outputs the correct answer or outputs a failure symbol with probability at least two thirds. So think about M is trying to check the, whether the oracle actually compute L sub n. So the second property is that if M is given the correct oracle, then it's going to be correct. And, th and the third probability is that no matter what oracle M is given, like it can be given an arbitrary garbage oracle, M is not going to output a wrong answer with high probability. So if it's going, you will get some like a random oracle to make just output a failure symbol. And we say L is C instance checkable if M can be implemented by a family of non-adaptive C oracle circuits. So the previous work proves the MA sub TC0 of C has no n to the k size C circuit's lower bound by using a piece-space by giving a p-space complete language that is TC0 instance checkable. So we'll, now we'll briefly explain how the, 
how the hard language MA sub T C zero of C is constructed. So recall the definition of MA. So so you so for a language L to be in MA, that has to be a polynomial time uniform algorithm V, which takes an input X, gets some things Y, and tosses some coins. And the verifier V of the hard MA sub T C zero of C language works as follows. First, it treats the witness Y as a polynomial size C circuit, we call it C sub Y. And then it runs the instance checker of L with C sub Y as the oracle. And the output, and its output is basically just the result of the instance checker. So as you can see, the overall complexity is running the, the instance checker with an oracle implementable, implemented with an oracle in C. So the overall complexity is just TC0 of C. So our goal here is to improve the TC0 above to AC0 parity, and then we can prove result one. And that's exactly what we did. We, we show that that's a T-space complete language L that is AC0 instance checkable, and it's also AC0 downward self-reducible, AC0 weakly error correctable, and, and palatable. I'm not going to define the last three properties, but they are also useful in the proof. And uh, by plugging the language above into the previous proof, we can get result one. And the construction of the P -space, this P-space complete language is very complicated, so I don't have time to go over the details. But you, can, you are welcome to check the full version of this paper for more details. Thanks.